What is up everyone? Welcome to today's live stream. This is my Christmas special live stream. This image in the corner here, it's like, where is it? It's right, right over there. This is a quick sketch of the idea. It's basically going to be two rotating snowflakes of some sort. This is just a, a quick little demonstration just because I wanted to see how this illusion would look. And as they rotate, they're going to be rotating in opposite directions like this, and it's going to create this interesting illusion. So this is the idea, and yeah, we're basically going to go from start to finish with this sketch, and in the next couple hours, we're going to have a full working kinetic sculpture that is going to be fully 3D printable. So let's do it. I'm going to throw some music on, and we're just going to get rolling here. And where's my tunes at? Right here. Let's find a good playlist. Ah, we'll just do the trimming. So this is Epidemic Sound. Not really sure what to expect from it, but it'll be a vibe for sure. All right, so let's get started. Basically, the first step is to figure out what the illusion is going to look like. And then we're going to work on the actual mechanics second. So we got to make the snowflake first and like this is actually a pretty cool illusion on its own this is just like a straight up if i show you this is what the, the snowflake looks like this is a, just a really loose kind of like quick version of it but as they rotate they do create this pretty interesting like expanding look to them but i found some other stuff on online i'm going to show you let's see if i can find it <clears throat> So there's a guy on Instagram, his name is Florian, let's see if I can find it here, I'll pull it up on here so you can see what I'm looking at, Florian, I'm not going to try to say that last name, okay, I'm going to try, <laughs> Gerlitz, Gerlitz, Gorlitz, and he's, he's posted a couple of videos like this, where they have these patterns and when they rotate they create this very interesting look, and this is kind of the inspiration for these snowflakes. Yeah, so something something like this is where we're going. Um, so let's let's just do another. We're gonna make another snowflake attempt with some sort of interesting pattern in it, like that, and we'll see what we can get. So let's create a new part here, and we're gonna sketch on this plane. And I'm I'm just gonna sketch one like segment of the snowflake, and then we're gonna do. Just pattern it around. So let's, let's just, I want to get some ideas or for snowflakes. And yeah, we're going to go to the trusty Google page. Here's a bunch of snowflakes right here. I think something like along like the lines of this one right here could be really interesting. Or, and like this, I guess would be like a kind of a combo of what I have and what this looks like. You know, this is also really cool. This is part of the inspo right here. So I'm going to try to incorporate something like this into some sort of snowflake. And I want to get this like really interesting kind of trippy snowflake thing. Yeah, this, I think, it, I think it could be a really cool, like pretty simple project, but will have a really cool effect and have a little bit of a Christmas vibe to it. So yeah, really awesome stuff. Okay, so we're gonna go with this kind of snowflake. I have no idea how to do this, so we're just gonna mess around and I'm gonna um, put these over here on this screen. You guys can't see the screen, but I'll just keep it for reference for myself. And then this too on this side right here. And cool, all right. So first things first. I think I'm gonna draw like a something like this and then like this. And then like that, boom. And we're gonna make this make these two pieces equal. Boom. These two pieces are equal. 
It's actually like really nice, like sketching things in SolidWorks. These I don't want to be like that. And then we'll make a little construction line so we can dimension. But yeah, it's nice to sketch things in SolidWorks because it gives you the ability to like make art with dimensions. And I don't know, like I'm an engineer, I guess it, it like, it's very satisfying to me to be able to do that. Um, first thing I can strain is the size of the snowflake. So I think the snowflake I want overall to be like, this is how I, I kind of figure this out often, like 120 millimeter diameter, like not bigger than that. I don't want this to be like a crazy huge print. So we'll start with that and set the dimension right here, just like this, 120, and that should scale everything perfectly. And then we're gonna do, give this a dimension of maybe 25. This, I'm just trying to get it to look a certain way. Um, I want these to be equal as, as well. And there we go. So that constrains. And if we make this and this equal, and then let's figure out, and then we can constrain the height, which will give us the angle here. And we'll go with 35. Okay, so if we ex extrude that, let's see what we get. I'm gonna extrude it as a thin feature and mid plane, and we're gonna select all the lines. And maybe we'll make it like, I don't know, two and a half. So I have done work on Fusion 360. It's a very, very similar software to, to what I'm using, which is SolidWorks. It's like all CAD kind of operates on the same principles. So you draw a sketch, you do an extrusion or a rotation or just a lot of different features that are kind of the, the same sort of stuff. Okay, so let's uh, take this. I need to make a quick axis right here. And then we can rotate that around that with a circular pattern. We're gonna pattern bodies around the axis and there we go. We kind of have like a cool snowflake. Interesting. Um, what's up, ANTV? ANTV has been working on this epic architectural piece of art. And um, yeah, I once again forgot to post the Discord, but hold on, let me get that in here. So if you guys wanna join the Discord, you can. It's a great place. We like to talk about engineering and art. Okay, copy and I have a link somewhere here. Boom. Wow, look at that. I got that done in like 30 seconds. That is a rare, rare occurrence. All right, back to work, back to work. So, we have ourselves a little bit of a snowflake. And I just wanna see before we do anything more, what um, this looks like when it's rotating. And that's kind of like the main goal here is to, to get the, the best rotation. I'm just gonna adjust this dimension, try to get these corners. Really, really cool looking snowflake right off the bat here. And yeah, so we can clean this up later, but first and foremost, we're just gonna see how this works. So save it TRNs. Snowflake 2. What's up, Discord Gamer85? How you doing? And we can pop that into our assembly. Boom. Well, it just takes takes practice. Really, like the, the, the goal, the key for me for learning anything is to have like an application. And hold on, let's just bring that in here. Boom. We're gonna align it to these snowflakes that already exist. We'll go uh, like axis, axis, boom. And then we're gonna go uh, right plane to right plane, boom. And then we will just align the faces. OK, 
Okay, so now we can hide this. And if we rotate this, we have a different... Yeah, Blender is definitely a challenge. I tried learning Blender, but I think I, I just didn't really have a good enough application for it right now. Thank you, Mr. Breadcat. I appreciate it. Okay, I think we need to have both of these the same because it takes the... It's kind of cool, but let's try putting another one of these snowflakes in and see what it looks like. Axis, axis, boom. Yeah, I, I tried learning Blender, but uh, I definitely, I got frustrated and quickly gave up. But I'm not saying to give up if you get frustrated. It's just that I'm like, I'm comfortable in SolidWorks and most of the stuff I can do is all in SolidWorks. Hey, Pavan. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to just like constantly make new stuff. I really, it's like, I love things coming out quickly. My favorite part is like designing something and printing it. And so the best way for me to do that is to just pump stuff out. Okay, so here is the other Oh, that's pretty cool too. Yeah. All right, what do you guys think? Do you guys like this illusion or, hold on, hold on. This one. And we might just go with both of them. Yeah, please recommend anything. What do you guys think? Which one do you prefer? So this one or this one. What is a, a oh a Ford Fusion illusion? What's what is a Ford Fusion illusion? Okay, well, in any case, it's cutting for you, eh? Hmm. I wonder if it's my internet or your internet. I'm not sure. I'm running this on wireless. I don't, I don't have a, a landline coming to this room. So yeah, if it's cutting out I, and it's on me, I apologize. There's not much I can really do about that. Thanks, Joanny. I like them both too. You know what? I think what I'm going to do is just give the option in the download file. So yeah. All right, cool. So we have ourselves some, some basic snowflakes, snowflakes. So I can talk a little bit more about what the design is going to look like now. So basically what it's going to be is I'm gonna have a base with some bevel gears right here. And I, I, can I draw on this? Be I've never tried that before. Draw. I don't, I don't know if there's like a draw, like a, a freehand draw function in SOLIDWORKS. Okay, it looks like there's not, but what I can do is this. So we're gonna have some sort of base here. There's gonna be a bevel gear like right here attached to another bevel gear, which we're gonna draw as just a rectangle right here. And this bevel gear is gonna be connected to two different bevel gears, which are gonna then be connected by a chain, a 3D printed chain to these. So this bevel gear is gonna to connect to both of these. So that means when you rotate it, both bevel gears are gonna be rotating in opposite directions. And that's how we're gonna get this op opposing directional movement of the snowflakes. And yeah, that's basically it. So I think I'm gonna start with the bevel gears. Or should I start with the chain? So the, the main thing that's really controlling things here is the chain size, because I think that's gonna be the smallest feature. And I want the chain to be something that is, that prints in place. So I actually just recently printed a, a chain. Let me see if I can find it.
So this is the kind of chain that we're going to go for. And this prints in place and then connects with a single pin on the end. Thanks for hanging, Mr. Breadcat. I hope you uh, can come back if you get a chance. But yeah, so this chain is also like, you know, you could wear it as a bracelet. But this is going to be the thing that like defines the size of everything. So let's start with the chain. So I'm just going to pull it open and we're going to just redesign it for the size that we need. So uh, let's find it from our last, from the last project. And you guys can see a little bit of how I, how I name things. 10K celebration. This is a project I'm still kind of working on. It's going to be coming out soon, but I wanted to get this up and printing before we went back to it. And then we're going to just grab it from, oh, we've got to find the new folder, which is Trippy Snowflakes. And we can just drag that in there, make sure we're copying it. Give it a new name. Okay, cool. So where, what happened? I would just open it. So I just need to resize this first because this is this big chain and I don't need it to be this big. And I think this is going to be the most um, tricky thing, but to print, especially small, but let's just try it. So the way I made this chain is I basically just started with this small chain and I started with this link and then I gave it some dimensions. So we're going to make this a lot smaller. The holes are going to be probably on a five millimeter pin, which is quite small, but I think it, sh it will be strong enough. So maybe actually we'll start with the, the holes for that just to kind of get an idea for the size. So a five millimeter pin means I want a 5.4 millimeter hole. And this is gonna be four and a half is I think a good clearance for that. So this will print as an overhang right here. Um, Discord Gamer 85, I've been 3D printing for Oh man, it's been like six years now. I started in 2016, five years. I guess it's been five years. I started in 2016. Um, haven't looked back. It's gotten me jobs. It's gotten me a lot of great, great things. Okay, so we just got to figure out the outside diameter for this right here. And we're going to fix everything after. So that should be fine. Let's see what that, what that small dimension is first. Minimum distance is 1.3. I want it to be a little bit bigger, like 1.6. So we'll make this 8.5. Let's see what that is now. 1.55, that'll do. So I'm just gonna make this consistent as well. So this will be 8.5. And then we don't need this to be as long. Oops. We don't need this to be as long as it is. It's a little bit longer than it needs to be, so. Hmm. I don't know, maybe we'll give it a 50 millimeter width and then we'll make that a little smaller too. I do sell my models, they're all on my website. And we're just gonna make this thickness eight and a half as well, consistency, and then we can fix this to 8.5 over two, boom. So there's our chain link. It might be a little wider than we need it to be as well right now, let's see. But yeah, all my models are available on my website. This is actually gonna be a free model. That's what my plan is for this, is kind of like a give back model. Okay, eight millimeter thickness. So let's see how that looks with the chain. We just need to adjust now this distance to 15. Beautiful. So if you want to see what that looks like when it's going to print. So I've left clearance for this pin right here, and this is going to be printed in place, which is sweet. I've never really messed around with much print in place stuff until recently. And this is kind of the way it's going to work. So as it prints, it's going to print this as an overhang right here. 
And so it's gonna take a little bit of making sure your printer's dialed for it to work, but yeah, pretty sweet. And you have yourself a chain and that's exactly what this is right here. Um, I have had some people who don't like the product. I have a guarantee on all the stuff that you buy from my website. So if you do print something and it doesn't work or you're just really truly unsatisfied, I will happily give you a refund on it. I appreciate the port support in the first place as it, as it stands. Let's just adjust the height width of that. Boom. Okay, so sweet. We got ourselves a chain. Let's throw it into the assembly and see what the size looks like. Chain link. It's quite thick. I think we're gonna have to make this a little bit thinner. But let's get our sprockets now and we can work work off of the sprockets. So I also have sprockets from the other project that I'm working on. That is, where did it go? Did I close it? I did. So we gotta go back to, where was it? 10K. Sprockets. Cool, got our sprockets. Now we're gonna have to adjust the size on these. So first things first, I'm going to adjust this drawing, which is this right here is representing the, the pins themselves. And so I'm, if I make it 8.5, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger to have some clearance. Hey, Neptune, AKA Dennis just gave away your true name. How's it going? Yeah. I wanted to uh, hold off on my lives until I could do like these, like, like complete a whole project in the live. So that's kind of where I'm at right now is I'm just trying to do lives now where I complete a whole product. The whole project in one live, start to finish. So here's the sprocket. Um, I want it to be like this. And we're gonna figure out the size. Yeah, I have man. His stuff is, is uh, it does really, really well. He, it's, you know, I don't know. Maybe you guys can give me some insight on that. Like, what is it just the print and play stuff that people like? Is it like, is, is my stuff too complicated for people? Is that why they prefer print and place? Like, these are the questions I'm asking for. Okay, so this sprocket is way too big. But yeah, give me your insights. Like, what do you guys think about paid models versus free models? I'm trying to do a little bit more free stuff to give back, but also it's like an advertising tool for me. You know, like I get more people to like interact with my stuff and see like the quality of it. But are you guys as 3D printers willing to spend money on good models or do you prefer the free stuff? Cause there is a lot of free stuff out there. That's the, that's the tricky thing with the, with models as well is it's, it's hard to know if you're gonna be able to print it, which is why I'm trying to offer a guarantee. So right now I'm just trying to get this sprocket dialed into like a size that I want it to be. And then we can worry about all this, all this red stuff here. I didn't realize you're a little bit off screen. There we go. But yeah, all this red stuff here. It's because, um, I don't know, super angry. Discord gamer, um, 3D printers, like, especially right now, they're, you can buy like them for like 250, which I get is expensive, but if you really want to get into it, it's a, it's not a huge price. Mr. I changed my name. Good, good insight. Good insight. And I, we, we 3D printers appreciate you watching our stuff, even though you don't have a 3D printer. Okay. So I think I want this sprocket to be 35 millimeters. So it's actually interesting. You don't need to know how to do 3D modeling before you get a printer because there's lots of stuff online that you can print and kind of learn about how they're made and stuff. And anti-V, I honestly feel the same way. I, I am constantly working on my own stuff. So I, I, don't, I don't spend a lot of time printing some other people's stuff, but I did, I did print some, um, like, I can't, what's, his, what's his name? Clickspring, Clockspring? I, I can't remember his name right now, but I, I, uh, 
I supported him on Patreon for a while because I, I really appreciate what he does. And I printed some of his, his stuff, which is really cool print and play stuff as well. Okay, I think we're gonna make this sprocket five millimeters thick. So that means the inside of this chain needs to be Discord gamer, that's very understandable. And yeah, it's uh listen, like everyone's got their their stuff. So there's absolutely zero judgment coming from my end. Okay, let's make some adjustments here now to get this looking right. Extrude thin. Let's adjust this fillet. What's your problem? It's just too big. We need to adjust the size of this right here. We're gonna make it smaller, like maybe like, I don't know. 10? Nope. It's because it's inside cut. It's too big. Let's make this nine for now. I think this is gonna be a hex, but we're not quite there yet. So once once we get there, we'll we'll figure out those details. And this make this a little bit thinner, like 1.6. Boom. And I want this to be a little bit bigger, so we're gonna go like 11. Beautiful. And now we can get that fillet in there. We can make that smaller too. Boom. And then everything else should work now. Beautiful. And we'll make the adjustments to it later. Okay. So what I'm thinking is this sprocket is gonna connect to a snowflake and then we're gonna have a second sprocket on the other side. So let's get the sprockets into place first. And I made this piece right here to kind of represent the support structure that's gonna be holding it. And I haven't quite figured out yet how we're gonna do that, but let's open up this snowflake and we're gonna work off of this one for now. And for the sake of uh, having something a little bit more workable, so I made that four millimeters and let's just adjust the thickness of this piece. Nope, we need this. Yes. Maybe we'll make it three and a half thick. I'm gonna bring these pieces down. No offense at all, I am from Canada. Born and raised and yeah, it's a great place. Great place to live. Just really cold and snowy right now. Cool, so we got our snowflake and I'm going to, before we circle pattern this, I wanna give this some nice rounded edges and we can do that chamfer we need to fill it and I believe it's three and a half over two I want them full round here you know it's better to do it this way actually doesn't like that okay we're gonna do it this way Yeah, it is, uh, it's cold. We just got snow dumped on us. It's pretty early in the year to have snow dumped on us, but it is what it is. Time to get, time to hit the slopes. Okay, I'm just doing this just so it looks a little bit better when we are um, putting everything together. So let's combine all of these bodies together. Boom. I may actually be able to do that here. Nope. Combine all. Boom. Okay, cool. So let's bring this guy back into view. Now we can mate this with the axis of the snowflake. All 
Um, I actually, I, I have a gear library, which is available on my website. You can download it for free. Oh, what's up, Engineered Relics? Yeah, a long time. You know what? I was actually meaning, we need, we need to get that, uh, that, com that call going because we have lots to chat about. But yeah, I have a gear library that I created. It's on my website under free STLs. It's not an STL file. It's a, they're all step files. So you can use them in your designs. You can modify them and stuff. And yeah, I don't know. It, it, they all seem to work well. It's, it's all about, it's really all about using a big enough gear tooth for your printer and also just like giving them enough clearance that they, they mesh. But you can check that out. My website is jbvcreative.com if you're interested. And yeah, okay. So we have ourselves, I think the way I'm gonna probably do this. No, I still don't know. But we have ourselves a sprocket and I wanna move this guy out a little bit. We can just get rid of that mate. And then we can make this chain right here to the sprocket. So we got our chain, we need this plane right here and our sprocket. Front plane, boom. And for this chain, this is gonna take a little bit of like um, trial and error, I think, to get it right. I've, this is like the, I don't know, the fourth project that I've made with chains. And yeah, it's a, uh, it's kind of, I'm still learning the best way to, to design these sprockets, but basically what it, what it is here is like the distance from this circle to this circle is equal to the distance from here to here. And so when it's, it should sit like, here, I'll show you. If I turn this into a single and we take this and we make that made it to this, boom. And then we mate this edge to here, it should work, yes. And so as it comes in, it sits, each one of these links kind of sits in this these pockets here. Hey, Kawitar, um, yeah, that's, I appreciate that, man. Yeah, I do put a lot of work into it, but I also really appreciate like the support that comes from the community. So that's kind of what I've opted to do is a little bit of both, like free models and, and uh, less free models. Like the ones that I put a little bit more time into, I'll probably charge for. And the ones that I can do in a day, I might give away for free. I'm not really sure exactly the way to do it at this point, but yeah, I appreciate your feedback. Okay, so we have ourselves a sprocket in Snowflake. Things are starting to really take shape. So let's grab the bevel gears now and bevel gears, I'll let, I'll let you into my, my dirty little secret on gears. Let me see if I can uh, figure out how to do this. So hopefully the uh, the guys at KHK Gears, uh, it's not working, KHK Gears. This is where I get all my gears from. And so my, my whole um, free gear library was just me basically grabbing a bunch of these gears and just putting them all in one place and exporting them as step files. But yeah, so this is where I got my bevel gears from as well. And I think one day I'll make a bevel gear library for you all as well. Um, yeah, so I use SolidWorks and I've been using it since I learned it in school. It's become a lot more accessible, but I think Fusion is the way to go if you want to learn how to, to start 3D modeling, just because there are so many tutorials out there and so many people are using it. And I believe, I don't know for sure, but I believe you can get it for free. So it's not a bad, it's not a bad place to start if you want to really learn how to do like engineering stuff. For 3D printers, I recommend what you can afford, but if you can afford a Prusa, or just something that's like really like reliable, like the Prusa, I recommend that. But it, it's like a thousand dollars, I believe Canadian for the Prusa. So I re it's, it's not the cheapest printer on the market, but as far as all my printers are concerned, it's worked out of the box and it still works today. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to like, I don't have to like adjust. I don't have to, you don't have to like level the bed or anything like that. It just works. So that's my recommendation. 
Okay, let's grab some bevel gears here and then we can figure out how it's all gonna start to look together. So when was the last time I used bevel gears? Last time I used bevel gears was on Rob Bob. We grabbed these bevel gears from Rob Bob. Let's rename them so we don't mess with SolidWorks if I ever open two things at once. And then we can just pop those in. And let's see, they might be a little small for this, but it might be fine too. So the way this is gonna work, we need three bevel gears. And I'm gonna adjust the inside of the bevel gears probably, but basically these bevel gears are gonna be connected to these sprockets down here. So this is how I'm gonna line everything up. For now, it's gonna, I often line things up with like the lazy way and it screws me over. So I'm gonna do it the not lazy way right now and use these axes that I made. And um, I think for the sake of doing these drawings right now, I'm gonna get rid of these fillets or these chamfers. Just cause it's not necessary for the design. Yeah, Dennis, very true. You can definitely get a, um, a Creality for really cheap these days. Or even like the Anycubic Mega is also really cheap and that's a great printer as well. I've just had to mess around with my my Ender 3 quite a bit and I'm like, it's not really what I like to do. But yeah, okay. So basically we have these bevel gears connected to these sprockets. The chain is gonna be connected from sprocket to sprocket and then we're gonna have a crank like over here so let's uh, let's make a quick base for this project just to give it some context. And the bases I make are super simple. Just a rectangle like this. I don't know exactly what size to make it yet, but we're gonna assume like somewhere like, I don't know, let's try this for now. And we can readjust it once it's in there, boom. And I'll make the base maybe like eight mil thick. And then I'm gonna give it some filleted, filleted, filleted. We're gonna fillet the corners like this. Maybe we'll make them 10 millimeter corners. Give it a chamfer around the edges. That's a little bit bigger than we want. Maybe one, no, one, 1.5. And there we go, TRSN base. Classic base, classic JBV creative base. And we're gonna insert that component into the mix here. And then we're gonna work off of this base now. So everything needs to move. You know, just for, uh, we're not gonna put the base like that. We're gonna put the base like this for now. We'll worry about the orientation later. Just wanna make sure. So lately I've been orienting everything on the front, pl front plane because when you drop it into the slicer, that drops it in face down on the base. And so I don't have to do any more work. So I'm just trying to optimize my process here, but for the sake of um, just how we have everything set up right now, it's it's all built off of this one piece right here, which is just like a quick, quick piece. So I think what I can do is mate that plane to this plane, just like that. And then I'm gonna float this and we can take this base and we can adjust it. We want the front plane of the base to be the top plane of the assembly. Boom. And then we can, for the top plane to be on the front plane of the assembly. I know this is confusing, but don't worry about it. This is just me getting the assembly oriented in the right position. Boom. Okay. So now we can move this up and we can get a better idea of where this is gonna be in relation to the base and this as well. So I'm thinking that this is gonna be like here and then this is gonna be like centered on the base. 
A 3D printed piano. That could be interesting. It would definitely have to work though. If I'm doing it, it's gotta work. That's kind of my thing. I'm not into printing like just like like uh, like random tchotchkes to sit on your desk. All my random tchotchkes actually at least have some motion to them. So where did our base go? I'm gonna move that up to the top here. Boom, okay. So now we can grab the center of the base and we may have to adjust this, but for the sake of just getting everything quickly laid out, this bevel gear is gonna sit in the center of the base. I'm not exactly sure how high we want it to be, but right now it's gonna sit like somewhere like that. And I, really the key is like how tall do we want this thing to be? And like that looks pretty good, but let's just see how tall that is overall. I don't want it to be anything crazy. Okay, 175 millimeters is like that. So that'd be like, like a nice looking sculpture, I think. Okay, cool. I'll definitely check that out. Post that, if you can, post a link here so we can, we can all take a look at it. So let's just figure out now where this is gonna be located. And I believe with these bevel gears, it's pretty easy actually. Just because I've done this before, I know that the center axis to this face is 11 and a half millimeters. And then we do the same thing Center this face to this bevel gears axis. It might have been eleven point two five. We can figure it out after. I'll say eleven and a half, just to be consistent. Yeah, eleven and a half is too big. But then we need to put these on the same plane here. So those have to be like that. But yeah, just like that, our bevel gears are basically meshed. So on this base, what I'm going to do is make some adjustments to the base. So this is where we have to think about how to mount things. So I'm thinking the bev this bevel gear is gonna be mounted from this side. And then these guys, either I mount from this side and this side have a central shaft running through them. They can move freely on the shaft. That might be the move. So as long as the bevel gear and the sprocket are meshed together, the bevel gear and the sprocket can move freely on the central shaft, which is sweet. And then we can put this wherever we want here. The other thing that we could potentially do, no. The bevel gears are what are basically defining the spacing here. And I'm trying to figure out if we put this inside and have the chain on the front, but it might take away from the illusion but if we do that, it's gonna keep everything more compact. So this is one of those designer's choice things where decisions need to be made. And when I don't really know what I'm gonna do, I often will just decide to work on something else and come back to it. So that's what we're gonna do here. So let's, let's figure out how to mount these bevel gears at least, and then we can go from there. So I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna print these into the base. Sometimes I do things where it snap into the base, but this 3D printed stuff, it's sometimes easier to just print it in place. And so that's how we're gonna do it this time around. So let's make a sketch on the top plane here. And this is how we can set the height of those bevel gears. So we're just gonna make a nice easy tab here. Maybe we're gonna make this shaft uh, we'll, we'll go with nine millimeter for now, but we can change that if we need to. And we'll make this distance two and a half mil. And then constrain this to the center, boom. Give it a height. We'll go with 25 for now. Love it. And then we're going to, I don't know, we've got to give it some spacing. So we'll give it an offset of Let's just say 10 for now, and it doesn't have to be more than five millimeters thick. And there we go, we have a very simple flange to hold this here, and it's on the wrong side. This is just such a classic thing right here. 
but the front plane's here and I want it to go this way because it's gonna print that way. So let's just adjust this. Okay, problem solved. So now we can, oh, okay, whatever, it's all good. Now we can, oh, well, we need to mirror this actually first. So let's take this, mirror it on the right plane, boom. I have not printed 3D, um, I've never 3D printed Lego bricks before just because I, I have a tendency to design my own pieces. But it definitely could be cool if I was trying to work on a Lego project and needed some parts that didn't exist. All right, so what do you guys think? Do you guys think it'd be better to have... the chain coming around here like this and then having these behind the chain I know it's kind of hard to see. Maybe it's better for me to um, get the chains into place first. So, hmm. You know what? This actually might need to be its own separate piece because it might have to come up and hold this as well. So we're gonna do it like this actually. We're gonna take, how do we do this? Let's get rid of this. We're gonna make this as a new part. It's kind of the design process. Sometimes you have to redo certain bits of work, but it's all it's all good in the end, especially because you can do it on CAD, it doesn't take a ton of work. So we're gonna maybe use this right here to hold the top equal. And I think I'm just gonna draw it like That is 25, I believe. And this was, we'll make this whatever, uh, we'll make it 60. Thanks guys, I appreciate it. And then I believe we made this five. We might need to make this thicker, I don't know. T, R, S, N, and we're gonna call this snowflake mount. And it might not let me do this. It's not gonna let me do that. We're gonna call it snowflake, snowflakes mount actual. <laughs> okay, cool. And then we can go back to the assembly. And so what we just did was instead of having that snowflake mount like that, if we throw this snowflake mount actual in, we're gonna make this to here and we're gonna figure out the interface after. I was thinking like I, I was using some snapping pieces before. I was thinking this time around I'm gonna use some C clamps. Chain behind the snowflakes. All right. I, I kind of I'm kind of with you on that actually, but let's see. We'll see how much how the spacing looks. It might look strange with like these big spaces between the snowflakes. But we'll see, just because of the, the bevel gear. We could also maybe find smaller bevel gears, which might be the answer as well. So we'll just, we'll figure it out as we go. For now, let's just get everything kind of like mocked up in like a rough form, and then we can work on that. So this snowflake right here now, I can mate to this hole. Boom. And then this right here, I can mate to this hole. Boom. And so basically, let's just hold this in place for now. We'll just fix it where it is. So we can have snowflake. We can basically have like, 
Why are you not moving? What are you attached to? Oh, yes. Okay. What are you attached to? Oh, you're attached to that. Okay, let's just remove um, this mate here. So basically we're saying either we have it attached, the chain in the front and the snowflake in the back, like this, and there'd be a chain here and there'd be two snowflakes in the middle. Or we have, you know, I think we got to just build it and we can decide from there. So we need another stand on this side. Boom. And we're going to mate the stand slants together. Yeah. Boom. And then we can show our other snowflake, which is this guy. And we're gonna just, I'm gonna try to just make some adjustments here. Let's get rid of the mate holding these two guys together. Which is this one. We can go back to having these two guys together. And then we can do the same on the other side. So that's going to be made to that. Boom. Cool. And then our snowflake. So we actually just need two more of these sprockets. Thanks, Kautar. How do I say your name? Is it Kautar? Kautar? But I appreciate you coming and enjoying this. Yeah, this is why I really wanted to hold off the lives until I was working on like pieces where I, I could kind of like see the start and end because it, it gives it a little bit more clarity to where we're going. Boom. And then, so it's kind of coming together like this. And I'm thinking, um, Dennis, you're probably right. It's probably better to have these in front like this, and this would have to be in the back. Let's just get this in the right spot now. Get rid of this mate here. And that's gonna be like there, and that's gonna be there. So this is the only problem is you have this like huge gap in the middle like this, which I'm, I'm not crazy about. Also, this needs to be a little bit taller. Let's make this taller, make it 80 maybe. So we can at least have a little bit more clearance there. So there's, there's two options right here, I guess. One option is to have these in the middle like this. And that could bring everything in. I'm not really sure exactly what to do here. It's the bevel gears that are creating the constraint because they, they have to be like this, this distance apart from each other. So the only other thing I can do is try to get smaller bevel gears going, which is fine. Nothing wrong with smaller bevel gears. And then that would bring everything in. Another option, no, this is, this is the bevel gears. I can make smaller sprockets but the sprockets are kind of constrained by the size of the shaft. It's interesting the, the dependencies that you, you kind of like find. Um, yeah, you definitely could have them on counter rotating shafts as well. That's an interesting thought. And it would kind of look like this is kind of what Neptune's saying. Like they're here and there would be, this would be connected to one shaft connected to one of these sprockets and then the other one be connected to the other shaft. That could be interesting too. Does it look a little bit too busy to you guys? Maybe the snowflakes just need to be bigger. Either snowflakes need to be bigger or, okay, let's, let's put the chain in and see what that looks like. So we'll hide this for now. This is actually a cool trick I recently just, I just recently learned. So if I make a sketch like Discord Gamer, thanks for, for hanging out. 
And hopefully we'll catch you the next time I go live. Um, join the Discord chat if you guys want to know like 100% when I'm going live. It's kind of inconsistent right now, which I know is like not the best way to do live streams, but... Yeah, the snowflakes can definitely be bigger. They're probably, they're probably only like, it'll probably only be like a one or two hour print. You just have to print them separately. But let's put the chain in and see what the chains look like. The chains might need to just get a little bit less beefy as well, actually. And I'm thinking about it, they're pretty beefy. What if I do this to the chains, 1.6. It's still a manageable size. Definitely less beefy now. Takes up less space. Okay, let's see if we can draw a chain here. So if I grab this and make a sketch on this plane, yes. And we're gonna do basically a reference circle there and then a reference circle on this guy here. And we'll make them equal size. 40 sounds good. Then we just need a line across like this. It's tangent to both, perfect. We need another one of those on this side. Make sure it's tangent to both. Now we can trim, trim, and then how do we do this? This is the tricky part here. It's not really tricky, it's just I don't always remember what to do. Chain component pattern. And we want this right here. The chain path is that sketch. The chain group is this piece right here. This is one part of the chain. This is another part of the chain. And the alignment plane, which is, this is the part that I don't always remember, I think is this there and we want to fill path beautiful so that's kind of what it would look like with the chain it's pretty beefy pretty tick chain i don't know what just happened what's wrong <laughs> I don't really know what the problem is, but maybe it's uh, this. There we go. What is, what's going on? Maybe this, there we go. Okay. So we got our sprocket and chain. Everything is fixed into place here. I don't know, sometimes SolidWorks just yells at me for no reason. We can hide this. And then we can bring back our snowflakes to see what things look like. Show. So I think the snowflakes need to be a little bit bigger. Just so it doesn't look as busy. Might be fine. Like, let's see if the shadows make a difference here. It's kind of hard to tell. So, do we make this all... It's pretty busy, I gotta say, but I think, I don't know. Hey, uh, Dennis, what do you think? <laughs> Dennis always has great ideas for me. That's a very, very good point. Double, one double gear up top it means one chain down here. I love where your head's at. That is so much better. Okay, that's what we're gonna do. So what I mean, guys, this is this is why I really appreciate doing this on live because I have your ideas to, to pull from. Let me just grab some water quickly. Don't have a lot here.
Okay, so one bevel gear up top means, yeah, let's just grab, let's, let's just see what it looks like first. So we take this bevel gear, and I think it's this, which mate is it? We'll get rid of that mate for now. So we're gonna take this axis of this bevel gear and we're gonna mate it to here. So the only thing with having the one bevel gear up here is the problem of the how we're going to mount this guy up here. So we're going to need that there and we're going to have to have, I like the idea of one bevel gear here though because then we save one, two, we save two sprockets at least. And let's just get rid of this. Boom. Boom. We're gonna take this sprocket here and we're gonna remate it to that, to this bevel gear. First, let's get this bevel gear positioned though, so it's not moving around. And we'll just, we're just gonna mate this face right now, at least to be parallel to this. Making it angry on SolidWorks. It's getting so angry with me. Uh, we're good. It's just the chain pattern. Okay, so now we can take this sprocket. And we can make this sprocket made it with this hole right here. Crazy pasta. I, I've considered it, but like right now, at the very least, I have like an audience on YouTube. Um, yeah, and like I'm not I'm not streaming consistently enough. I think to get Twitch to work right now, but maybe I will. If you guys are all down to come with me to Twitch, then we can do it. Okay. Right now, this chain pattern is messing with things, so we're gonna get rid of it. And we're gonna get rid of this link for now as well, and we'll come back to it. Let's just get this all lined up first. So with Neptune's creation's idea, this is gonna be here, and this is gonna be somewhere on this side here. And then the crank is gonna attach directly to the sprocket and that's gonna be able to control everything. And so the way that that's gonna look is it's gonna be a little bit more compact in the middle. So then we can take this back. So this doesn't need to be mated anymore to this plane. So then we can move this forward and back, beautiful. And get rid of this, we don't need it. So if that's there, like that, and then this would be like here, we can get rid of this mate. And then we can probably print this all kind of as one piece, but I'm not I'm not 100% on that right now. It's not quite clear yet. It's funny because like often when I do these projects, I like find myself like not exactly sure how things are gonna look, but as you take it one bit at a time, it sort of starts to make it's, itself clear like what needs to be done and how it needs to be done. And it's kind of getting there now. Okay, so. Basically, there's gonna be a crank coming out of this piece right here. These are gonna be connected right here. Am I missing something here? If we have this bevel turning, we don't need we don't need a bevel on this side necessarily. Yeah, okay, cool. We're on the same page, love it. 
Okay, so let's just get this kind of like oriented in the right position. Boom. And after that is, so actually we just need this guy's axis. There to there. I believe I did it as 11.5, but I think it's actually 11.25. This is just coming from like the last projects I've done. It's, I've spaced it out with 11.25 and it worked. So we're just gonna stick to that number. So let's just fix that on these other ones before I forget. And this guy. And then we can worry about how it's all gonna connect after. What I'm thinking is this piece is gonna be a U-shaped piece like this, and that's gonna connect across there. And we will probably print, and then we can, ooh, I don't know. Yeah, or maybe it's even gonna be a square piece like this. Not quite sure yet. So one thing like that I always am thinking about when I'm making these projects is how like you guys are gonna print it yourselves. And I don't, I don't want it to be printed with any supports, nothing like that. So that's a huge factor when I'm designing for what I think about. So I'm thinking here, this piece could print vertically like this. It's kind of a, a tall piece, which I like to stay away from, but it will probably work. And then what Neptune was saying was these could be coaxial snowflakes. So basically they're gonna run on the same shaft going through on the same plane, on the same axis, I guess is really what coaxial, but they're gonna be on two different shafts. One's gonna run inside the other one. And so let's see, do I like the way this looks? I think I do. I'm pretty happy with how this looks. What is going on here? Did they lose their mates? They did. So we're gonna mate this, at least for now, to this face. Boom. And then this should be mated to the same thing. Where are you? Boom. So, okay, so one way to do these coaxial shafts, we could have the shafts coming actually right out of the snowflakes themselves. And I'll, I'll do a quick version of that just to show you what I mean. It might even be the thing we go with in the end. So sketch. So this will be like the internal shaft and we'll just make it 11 works for now. And let's just give it some, actually what we're gonna do first is this. First, I'm gonna make like a center flange, make it like 20. And that will be on up to one direction. It will give it a space. This is between the snowflakes, three millimeters. And then I meant to do this on the other side. No, this one. Up to surface, to this one, boom. And then we can sketch out of here, a central shaft. This is the internal shaft and it's gonna be, uh, we'll make it 11 for now. We can always adjust that after. And let's just give it some arbitrary height of like 50. So this is gonna print this side down flat on the, the bed of the printer. And the shaft's gonna come up through that. And then on this guy, we're gonna create a second configuration we're gonna call this external shaft. And the way this guy is gonna work is it's actually gonna have, not this shaft. Actually, we'll keep that there. No, we won't. We're gonna do it like this. It doesn't need either of these things. It's gonna need a hole in it that that first shaft can go through. So this will be 11.4. And we might need to make that central flange on it as well. So before we make that, we'll do the central flange. Cool. And then 
we can grab this sketch. Make a hole through it. And then we can make a shaft coming out of that. That would be like this. Make the wall of that shaft two and a half mil, and we can extrude that up, and we'll just go an arbitrary, I don't know, 40 for now. Okay, cool. So now when we look here, what we'll do is this. This guy is going to be external shaft configuration. So see how it's got that hole. And then this guy, we're just gonna have to turn it around. Flip me alignment, boom. Okay, and then so you, you can see now, if we look at these two together, this is gonna be connected to this face. That's the, the flange I made there to keep it spaced out. And then, yeah, if we look at it together, this, here, we'll just hold this steady for now. I can show you, fix that. It's not gonna like that because of this. Okay, so this is gonna rotate internally through this shaft right here. And then this is attached to this guy. And that's pretty sweet. So now we gotta connect it to these bevel gears. How are we gonna connect it to the bevel gears? The next question. So this is where hex configurations come in. So let's, let's make those next. And I'm going to, I'm gonna start by making the first hex. So basically we're just gonna get rid of this. We don't need this anymore. That was from Rob Bob. Rob Bob, you're done. Good work, but I like the hexes. They work They work pretty well. And we'll just give it an arbitrary, I don't know, we'll, we'll adjust these after, but. Cool. And it's already a cut, so that's perfect. Oops, perfect. And obviously this is unhappy, but we can get rid of that. We don't need it for now. We'll worry about those flanges after. And then we're gonna make a second configuration. This is internal. Internal shaft. And then we're gonna add a second configuration. And I'll actually just make it derived external. And we can adjust the size of this now, just for that configuration. Boom, and we'll make it, let's just say 15 for now, boom. So external shaft is going to be this guy. Internal shaft is going to be this guy. And then we're going to have to adjust these holes as well, but it's all good. I'm actually thinking now I want these to print flat because when you have big holes, printing them vertically like this would, uh, there'd be a little too much overhang. So. Let's just throw our hexes on here so you guys can kind of see where, where my head's at with this. So on this guy, we're gonna make a hex on the end of this. That's a hex. And we're gonna make this 11. So we're gonna have to make this a bigger central shaft. What is this one? It's 11. Okay, we're gonna make this smaller then. Nine, does that fit? That fits. Perfect. Make that vertical. We can extrude that out. Don't need to extrude it very far, like maybe like that. That's gonna C clamp onto this gear, this right here. So I need to adjust this to nine. I like to make these these hex slide fits nine like 0.3 spacing. So this hole is, is 9.3, this shaft right here is nine. And what is, this is fixed, I believe. No, close, this is fixed. We can make this shorter, it's not, it doesn't have to be this long. 30, boom. And then this, 
right here, this face is going to interact with this face. Not exactly sure what just happened. That's all good. It's this um, this guy right here is lacking a mate. This one. Maybe I got the wrong face here. That's what happened here. Strange, but we're gonna figure that out after because we just gotta get this guy now. So this guy needs a big hex that's gotta fit into this right here. So we're gonna do it like this. Maybe I'll go there. That will go there, something like that. Let's give this a dimension. 11.5 internal, that's fine. And this is the external. 14, yeah, that works. Let's constrain everything. Boom. Extrude it out. And then this guy is going to connect into this guy. So let's just get rid of this mate first. Got some uh, some serious angry assemblies right now, but it's all good. We're gonna figure it out. Which one is it? It's not that one. It's not that. It's that one. No, it's not that one. Which one? Are, which are you? It's this one. There we go. Okay, so this is gonna connect to this. Okay, so to summarize what we just did. I'm not really sure what this guy's deal is right now. Get rid of that, we can get rid of some of the reds. Let's get this, oh, I know what the problem is. I deleted the mate. Just gotta remake that with that. Okay. Perfect. So to summarize, this and this. No, did the wrong thing. Look what happens when I when I CAD too hard for for a straight period of time. I start to get a little crazy. To summarize, this and this. These are basically fixed together. So when this bevel gear rotates, this snowflake will rotate. This bevel gear and this bevel gear, isolate, same thing. So these are gonna be fixed together like this. And we can adjust this, the size of this hole is actually gotta be 14.3, I believe, yeah. So as this bevel gear rotates, this is gonna rotate. And you can see now, if we take this guy, we'll just hide this at least for now. That's all rotating internal to this. And it's all gonna be rotating on this shaft. And so now we gotta make everything shorter because it's way too long. This only needs to be like, like not that far. Like it only needs to be, no, it's not this one. What just happened here? I think we got we got a little mixed up here. That's the internal guy. Oh yeah, that's what it is. Okay. There. This, the length of this is just a little too long. So let's just see if we make that 10. There we go, that solves the problem. So these are actually gonna be basically almost touching. So we're gonna make that three. Boom. And then now we can adjust the length of this in comparison. And let's just adjust everything else. These bevel gears are seven millimeters thick, so these flanges have to be seven millimeters. There we go, it's internal. And I'm just trying to think of the way everything's gonna be held together. It's all gonna be held together on this shaft. 
And that's going to be snapped into this bevel gear with a C clamp on this side. So it's all going to push through here and then it's going to snap into place. So it actually should be fine as long as it fits with this. So that's going to be the driving factor here. So I guess we can pull this back. These bevel gears actually need a flange on the front. So let's draw that. Select this loop and then we need to make a little flange. We'll make it 15 mil and we'll make it 1.5 millimeter thick. So now we can attach these flanges to where they're supposed to go and it's all kind of coming together. It's, it's a little bit crazy right now, but it will it'll make sense soon. This one, do we want a flange on this one? Or is it good enough to use this as a flange? No, because that will slide around. So we need a flange here. So the problem is the flange is too, too small. So we're just gonna adjust the size of this for this configuration and we'll make it 19, beautiful. And so that will butt up right against this. So since we added one and a half millimeter flange to there, we needed this to be an extra one and a half millimeters as well. Cool. We can make that mate attachment, boom. Okay, so it's actually coming together really nicely now. Next thing we need to do is get this lined up with this so we can see how far these snowflakes need to be from this bevel gear. And that will just be adjusting this flange right here. So to do that, we're gonna take this, made it with this. And I have to figure out how to get that into place here. The best way to do it, I think would be to create a plane through this hole. So we're just gonna do an axis and then, no, 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 no. This needs to be parallel, perfect. So now we can mate the axis of this to, where is it? No, this guy. The axis of this to the plane of this mount, which is here. Cool, now that's not gonna go anywhere. So that's all constrained. So you can see there's a little bit of interference right here. So that's gonna be solved by adjusting this distance and we'll make it 10. We might need to adjust that after. And then now we can bring this in together and that's first we're gonna figure out what the distance is, six and a half. So I just need to take six and a half away from this. Boom. So the chain's gonna come up the side and there's gonna be a crank on here. It's gonna come up through here that's going to rotate this bevel gear, which is going to rotate these bevel gears in the opposite directions, which are connected to these snowflakes, respectively, this one to the front one, this one to the back one. And as they rotate, oh, I need my, um, let's hold this firm for a second and get our gear mates back unsuppressed and working. Cool, so as they rotate, reverse, there we go. Cool, so now we can mate the bevel gears together so we can get a better idea for how it's all gonna spin. So we need this bevel gear, we just need to constrain, it doesn't really matter how we do this, but so we'll just constrain that to a piece of snowflake. And it's, is it this one?
So now you can see as I rotate this bevel gear, it's gonna rotate everything, but we can get rid of this gear mate because we're gonna put that gear mate somewhere else. But yeah, so you can see these are attached and whatever, like I didn't line it up, I might as well. Can't be too lazy here. It's better to just get it right. So there's no confusion. There we go. So those are now connected. Let's connect this guy and this guy. So we just need a cross made member here and this one. There we go. Uh, those are connected. Boom. So now we can do the mates on these bevel gears. And this is one thing I love about SolidWorks. I don't know how this works in Fusion, but we have these mechanical mates here. And so I can create these gear mates, which is great. Because now as I spin this, see how it rotates the bevel gear? And then we can do that for these two as well. And we can see this thing, how, it actually, how the gears are actually gonna work. So we need this axis and this axis. Create a bevel gear mate here, mechanical mates, gear, boom. And there we go. So that's how the snowflakes are gonna spin, which is sweet. So the last thing we need to do now, and I'm gonna do the cleanup and like make this whole thing 3D printable off stream, but for the sake of finalizing the mechanical design at least, we just need to put a crank in, which is gonna be attached to this guy. And I think I'm just gonna make a quick plane here so I can then attach this. And the axis, boom. And that's mainly just to hold it into place. Boom. Yeah, this is, I, you know what, like, I've been doing this for a long time and this still gets me pumped up, like really pumped up. And like, what's cool about this download file is I can actually have different designs for these front pieces. So like, you could even do something for like Christmas with the snowflakes. And then when, if you wanna just like switch it to have it more like year round friendly, we can like switch it to something completely different. Okay. Let's figure out how to do the crank now. And I'm wondering if we might just have the crank attached directly to the sprocket. Right now, the, the gear ratio of this whole thing is one to one. So for every crank of this sprocket, we're gonna get one full crank of the bevel gear, which I think is cool, because then you can control the speed that you spin everything at, which I'm down for that. I'm cool with that. So the next thing we have to figure out too is how we're gonna attach this. I think I'm actually gonna make this sprocket and bevel gear one piece, just for the sake of ease of printing. And then it's probably gonna connect to, I was thinking about making maybe making like an add-on for these pieces. So you're gonna print this flat, print this flat. You're gonna snap a piece onto this side to attach this gear in. And then, yeah, that might be the best way to do it. We'll see, or I even, may, I don't even know. I don't know yet, I don't know yet. It'll, the idea will come, but let's, let's put a crank on this. Do we wanna crank directly on the bevel gear? Or directly on the sprocket is the question that I would like to answer right now, which I don't know yet. Another thing I could no. I want to print this. I want to print this flat because I want these holes to print well. These actually, I don't need holes down here anymore. I can make that adjustment. Sometimes I just like procrastinate things while I'm trying to fit, make decisions. Decision fatigue is a definitely a huge, a huge thing. 
Yeah, it, that's actually, it's actually very true. The hand might get a little close. So what I can do to, to fix that problem. Hmm. Either I make these longer and make these taller. That's one option. These are not crazy huge. It just looks a little funny big like that. I'm wondering though, maybe I want the crank. No, I don't know. What do you guys think about this? If the crank is on the back, you kind of have to like, you'll, you'll kind of have to like crank it like, it's, it's too awkward to crank on the back. You could also, I don't know. I could have it. I feel like crank on the side, just like the ergonomics of the crank on the side is probably the best way to do it. So maybe I'll just bring the crank out to the edge of this piece and maybe this will move across to the side. Let's see how that looks. I like it centered though. You know what, this is actually be fine. I think out here, okay. This, this is how we're gonna do it. This is how we're gonna do it. I've made a decision. We need to grab the crank from the huge wave room. You mean like towards the back? Let's try it this way first. And if, if we don't like the way it looks, we can try something else. Just, we're just gonna make, make some moves here. So I think it's a huge wave of Rooney. Big wave high, that's what I called it working title. And we need the big crank. Where's the crank? Crank, 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 crank. Let's get that right. T R S N crank. Yeah, so it's on that, that shaft, so it's extended away. Insert component, TRSN crank. Yes, Anti V, congrats. It's the best feeling. So we kind of have it like this. And this is gonna have to be like here maybe. Uh, are you posting it in the Discord? And we can make this crank a little smaller. this up a little bit. So let's make some flanges on the base. The music stopped. This gets weirdly quiet in here when the music stops. Cool. Let's see what that has. Okay, so yeah, the last thing we need is really just a flange on the base for the sprocket. And to do that, I think I'm gonna bring this, it's a little tall. That's a little bit close. <laughs> This is the challenge of this stuff. Like if everything was motorized, which I might make like a motorized version of this just for fun, cause I think it'll look cool. But if everything is motorized, it just becomes so much easier not to have like a crank, but.
One thing I'm actually thinking about right now too is maybe putting this sprocket on the back. I don't know. I don't know what to do here, but the design is basically there, which is sweet. No one likes a cranky sculpture. But if I put the crank on the back, unless I put the crank on the front, what are your guys thoughts on the crank on the front? If it was like coming out of the front, make this a little bit taller, have the chain running on the front of the sculpture up through here. And then the way that you'd be cranking it is like, like from the front. Do I have an example of a front crank This is a back crank sculpture. And it might be a little awkward from the back. I just, I can't remember. Let's try it and see. You prefer it on the sides, eh? I think that I feel the same way about it. Yeah, like back crank is like weird. You kind of have to like give yourself a little carpal tunnel to get it to work. And like, it's not as fun to like well, I guess it's like, like, check it out, look at it. But when you crank it from the side, it's like everyone can look at it while you're cranking. So I think we're going to get, we're going to find a way to get this to work on the side. I just don't know if I, if I want it to be centered on the base or not. All right. The jury has spoken. We are going to get this crank on the side. So the last thing we need here is a flange and we'll just throw it in and then I think I'm gonna take take some time away from this and then come back to it and finalize it. But it's not gonna change very much from how it looks right now, which is great. So let's do the, the base flange for the crank. I don't I just hate 45 degree angles. <laughs> That's a purely like a preference thing. Yeah, I think uh, we're just gonna stick to my classic side crank kinetic sculpture. Boom, boom, boom. I don't remember what the size of the crank is at this point, but. Well, you will be missed because your suggestions are so helpful, but enjoy your day, Dennis. And yeah, keep sending those emails with ideas. I love it. Just gonna give this a height of some sort. Just do that for now and some sort of dimension that way. We'll do five for now. Yeah, exactly. You got to crank that. You can tell them to crank that soldier boy. Okay. Let's see if this is in the right spot. I guess this needs to be taller. 25 sounds about right. It'll be 27 sounds about right. All right. And then we can also float this. It's 
all going to depend on this guy right here. What just got angry? Something got angry here. This guy. We will unfloat this. There we go. Cool. And then we need to basically this needs an offset. Let's make it 10 for now. And we're gonna make it go this way instead. And then we're gonna make another one of these flanges. Right here. Thank you, Lakshya, I appreciate it. And we need this hole, boom. And then we can just extrude that this way. Five millimeters and boom. So that's kind of the basics of it. I think, um, yeah, it's basically the project. It's not gonna change much from here. I'm probably just gonna work on the aesthetics a little bit. Maybe make this like a, a nice looking piece. Maybe make it hollow, more printer material friendly. And then the only other thing that I need to figure out is how I'm gonna mount this bevel gear right here. But yeah, that's basically taking, where is it? This sketch in the top corner here and turning it into a sculpture. And yeah, let's see what happens when we crank it. I just need to add those last mates in. If I take this axis and this, and we're gonna give them a gear mate, one to one. Let's see if that will, oh, let's hold that into place here. And now we just need to reverse the mate, reverse, boom. Okay, so that's representative of the chain. And then we just need to take this bevel gear, grab one of those planes, this, or the sprocket. Boom. Okay, cool. So the final reveal. This is what it's gonna look like when you're cranking it. So there's one thing I may add to this. I may add a gear reduction to slow it down. But that's pretty sweet. And head on, you're gonna have this cool looking, yeah, see the slower you go, the more interesting that illusion looks. But I guess fast is cool too. And yeah, any, that's, that's, that's how you go from a sketch to a, a fully functional kinetic sculpture. And what is it, what's it being an hour and 45 minutes? So to make this fully 3D printable, it just needs a little bit more work, which I'm gonna do offline. It does look like chicken feed. We're gonna adjust the aesthetics of this as well. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna work on that probably by doing this actually. This is probably the main way I'm gonna adjust it is with like some sort of like, There looks a little bit more like, less like chicken feet. Eh, still kind of looks like chicken feet. Anyways, we're, we're gonna work on the aesthetics offline as well. But for now, I think we're gonna call that a successful stream. Look at that. That's not a bad idea. 
So Chris, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to have multiple options for snowflakes as well. Cause I also have these guys, which are also an interesting design and it gives you an interesting effect. So yeah, it's gonna be, I don't know, there's a process, but. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on the aesthetics, like probably gonna follow a little bit more of these designs here. Make them a little bit less chicken feet. They all kind of look a little chicken feety though, eh? I know you, when you say that. Spiral arms will definitely create very cool effects. So yeah, lots of stuff to do, but stay tuned for the, um, the final project. I'm hoping to get it done in the next two days. And I'm gonna have it available for free on my website. So if you guys wanna print it, you guys are more than welcome to do that. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. And hopefully I'll see you in the next stream.